<laughs> okay, so hi. In my recent dumpster diving, I came across this thing. It's actually a um, rotary fan stroke heater in a vertical, and it's full of tons of bits. Now, you find these things often because, to be honest, they're not that well made, and they burn out pretty quickly. And once they stop giving out heat, people just usually chuck them. But they're full of gear. Now, the approach to this is always the same. You basically undo every screw, give it a tug to see where the plastic will part. And if it won't quite part, then it just means there's a catch in there. So you jam a screwdriver in and leave it, leave it open. And that's all you do with these things. So I'm going to do exactly that. So it is a little bit up like opening a Christmas present. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. I mean, you know what roughly you're going to get, but the exact bits and pieces, well, really, it's whatever the manufacturer used when he made them. Now, the main thing that we were after was this, which is a well-balanced rotor. And from previous stuff we've done, we know this will spin in the lightest of breezes. So it makes a good candidate for a very small So all I gathered in this thing was stick eight magnets, north, south, north, south on the bottom there, and milk this cradle out to some plastic board so that actually sits in there like that and we get the wind to turn it so obviously what we've again got is a rotating magnetic field now I wanted to play with this because I've done a fair few of these kind of things with standard coil arrangements but I still wanted to have a play with it so what I did was wind a pancake coil or a Tesla coil so this is a single layer pancake coil and that's going to go on there actually on the inside and to wind them things what I do is uh Use a former. And the former is just a block of wood with a bolt through it. So there's a block of wood, bolt through it, and then a bit of plastic like that with the cut in it. Pop that on. Wind your coil, bit of super glue, and the whole thing comes off as a flat pancake coil. Now, I've no idea how this is going to work or if it's going to work at all. But I'm going to stick the pancake coil in there and we'll get it spinning and see if we get anything out of it. Okay, there it is set up and we'll give it a spin with a hairdryer because... I could take it out in the wind, but let's give it a spin with the hairdryer anyway. I've got it reading a voltage. <laughs> okay, that was stunningly disappointing. I mean, that's going at a red or not, say. It's got a bunch of magnets on it, and it's about a millivolt, which is just embarrassing, really. Let's pop it on the current. Have a look at the current. About half a milliamp. I mean, I have to say, I don't think that was particularly impressive. Now, it could be loads of things, hey? I mean, that um, sing it's a single coil on there. It's fairly thick wire, so there aren't many turns on it, etc, etc, etc. But I can't say that I'm particularly blown away by it. So there's yeah. one way to look at that pancake coil was it was a failure. Me, I think a bit more of a learning experience, really. And I don't think pancake coils are going to be the way I'm going to go. I mean... Like I say, I must have made a ton of mistakes, and I'm sure people can point out those mistakes to me, but personally, I think I'll leave that. Now then, I have put one of these coils on here, just the one, and these are the coils we've been using before, so let's give that a spin up and see whether the whole little contraption does anything at all. If I connect that up to my multimeter, we'll turn the hairdryer on it again. And I've got a reading the voltage. Okay, spin it up. <laughs> that got 22 volts, no problem at all. Probably nothing in the way of milliamps. But what I've got here is that lighting panel. It's a whole bunch of LEDs, actually. One, two, three... 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, about 36 LEDs. I'm going to connect that up and let's see if we can get some light out of it. Ah, back on with the hairdryer. <laughs> there you go. So I've been going on a lot about this switch reluctance. So what I've done is I've taken the blue coil that we just used and stuck a couple of magnets on the back, actually. 
Now if we hold back quite close to here and give it a spin, we can see what kind of effect it has. Now I've torn all the magnets off of here and what I've put onto the end there are strips of steel that I cut out from the microwave oven transformer. So these are just thin laminates, a single laminate of steel in a crisscross of eight. And if we get that a spin up, We can actually get a couple of volts out of that. Now this isn't strictly switch reluctance, okay, because we're just passing the steel in front of that magnetic field, so what it's doing is redirecting the flux a little bit as opposed to switching the flux. But it still gives us a result. I mean, we did get 20 volts with this, and we were able to light up that bank of LEDs. We'll be lucky to light an LED with that. So. There are lots of different ways of approaching this, and my thought really is that there's a, a different ways for different configurations that you might be interested in. Now, the pancake call didn't give a particularly good result, but then, you know, it, it was a one single pancake coil and it was wound quite large. The best result we got was just from sticking the magnet straight on the rotor and putting a coil up against them. I think the most interesting result is this idea of a switch reluctance. Now, there is an awful lot of research on these switch reluctance devices. They um, really got very, very interesting, and they're very interesting for good reasons. I mean, one of the things is they're incredibly lightweight, which means that they'll spin in the lightest of breezes, and they'll spin really, really fast without flow, uh, throwing apart, which is one of the reasons everybody's interested in them, because obviously the production is actually to do with speed of turn more than anything, and these things will spin really quickly. And obviously the tolerances here are a bit rubbish, so we're not expecting great results. What I'm showing you really is those different designs will do the same job, just in different ways. The switch reluctance is getting an awful lot of interest because of ease of manufacture, cheapness of manufacture, lightness, a reduced number of materials, longer lifestyle, lifespan, much faster spinning, and there are lots and lots of reasons people are interested in switch reluctance. It's also the reason that I'm looking at it. Because although switch reluctance generators have great possibilities, so does a switch reluctance motor. And of course, we're coming up to doing that mini and we're very interested in motors per se, and in particular, switch reluctant motors. Anyway, I thought I'd share all of that with you. I hope it was of interest. It's a bit questionable how comparable everything is. I think it's just of interest. And thank you very much for watching.